Controls in Destiny have been a thing for the past 7 years ever since the launch of Destiny 1 back in 2014. Patrols have slightly evolved over the past decade, from gaining faction reputation, to unlocking secret missions, to earning clan XP, event materials, and… heroic patrols? Hmm. So people, I am Divide and this is episode 4 of my Everything About series for guiding new and returning players, and for experienced players who want to master their knowledge in this topic. So guys, this is everything you need to know about patrols. Defining patrol can mean a few things in Destiny because in itself it's an activity, but it's also something you do every day in Destiny. Let's take a look. So there are two main functions of patrol. The first is exploration, and the second is an actual patrol mission. Firstly, we're going to take a look at patrol missions. Currently, there are approximately 181 patrol missions in Destiny 2 Beyond Light as of Season 12 in 2021. 51 in EEDZ, 50 on Nessus, 28 on the Tangled Shore, 12 for the Dreaming City, 13 for the Moon, and now I don't have the exact number but around 15 for the Cosmodrome and 12 for Europa. These do not all include patrol variants. These patrols are spread out across the solar system with different types of variants and missions. There are currently 5 different primary patrol types and probably hundreds of variants. These are known as Combat, Salvage, Survey, Assassination, and Scan or Analysis. Although it becomes 6 if you include the Moon's Toland patrol, but it's essentially the same as a scan mission. So what is a patrol? A patrol is a small mission that you and your fire team can complete around planets whilst exploring. A patrol variant referred to in this video is where the same mission type of a patrol has different elements or requirements to it. For example, the salvage mission is a patrol type and could ask you to salvage from one of all types of enemies. With your ghost pulled out by pressing select on Xbox, you can see where all the patrols are in the area. You'll see the symbols above the beacon which identifies what that patrol type is. You can only view where patrols are on the map in the area that you're currently in. For this example, I'm here on Nessus and you can see all the patrols around me. You can have only one patrol mission active at a time, and this does not allow you to start other missions until the patrol is either completed or abandoned by the fire team leader. Patrols can be completed in a fire team of up to three players. This is beneficial when it comes to the salvage mission because you get triple the drops to collect. More on that soon. You usually get around three patrols per location to choose from at first, with more available once you complete the ones currently available to you. After completing so many within the same area, they will temporarily be on a cooldown before respawning. I'll touch more on this later. The combat patrol mission is to kill enemies within the area. Although the mission is bugged and can be completed in any area, as progress will still be made for kills in any location on the planet that you're on. Depending on the patrol variant, kill progress may count anywhere between 7 and 12%. Although these are not official figures, the progress rate is around that range. To complete the salvage mission, it's pretty simple really, just salvage. Kill the required enemies to collect the salvage they drop, and note that progress only counts in the area that you picked up the patrol from. There are many types of salvage patrols, although they provide the same mission, the requirements may alter. For example, kill Vex or Taken, or only Cabal Scions. You know what your requirement is if you pull your ghost out and view the mission objective in detail, in the top left. For each player in your fire team, killing an enemy that drops salvage will drop for every member. So if you have two others with you, your progress will be free for one kill and not one. And in third we have the survey patrol. You'll be sent to the next patrol zone to scout out an area for nearby enemies. Standing in the surveyor's marked location will gradually progress the patrol, not much more to add on that. In the assassination patrol, you'll be sent to a non-public location to kill a small boss, also known as a HVT or high value target mini boss. The area you're sent to shouldn't be far away from where you activated the patrol, simply just kill the boss to complete that patrol mission. Finally, the scan and tola missions require you to obviously scan an object nearby. For the scan mission it will send you to a different location, and for the tola mission on the moon, that will send you to somewhere within your current area, so it's pretty quick. To identify the patrol summary of requirements to complete, pull out your ghost so you get a detailed view of the mission objective, whilst the patrol is currently active. Currently completing patrols in Destiny 2 will reward you with 250 clan XP, a few planetary materials for the planet that you're on, and some glimmer. Sometimes you may benefit from additional rewards if there's a current active event on, like the dawning, which would grant you some essence of dawning materials, or something related to the current seasonal theme. The season of the hunt, you may be granted a mutation mod. Expect similar changes in the future seasons. The rewards are not great and in my opinion I would only recommend doing them if you're going to be in the area doing other things like bounties. Respawning a patrol in Destiny 2 has changed. In previous seasons before season 12 you could activate a patrol, then abandon that patrol and a new patrol type would then spawn in a location. This was a good method if you wanted to target a specific patrol quickly. However, now abandoning a patrol will respawn that same patrol. A technique to respawn a patrol or patrols if you either don't like them or you've completed them all is just to go to the orbit and back. 
This will refresh the patrols as you're given a new spawning instance. Finally, completing patrols will temporarily activate a cooldown for new patrols to spawn. You'll have to wait around and do any other available patrols before they respawn automatically over time. On the Cosmodrone and Europa, patrols act differently. The requirements are more demanding, granting as little as 3% progress for the kill on the kill mission. The kill mission also changes, giving you additional requirements such as getting ability kills or headshot kills. With these much stricter requirements, you gain no additional rewards so it's not worth doing, although Europa patrols can grant you currency for Varix. However, in the Eclipse Zone on Europa, there is also a chance to start a heroic patrol. Either go to orbit and back and load into the weekly Eclipse Zone to see a yellow looking heroic patrol, or complete patrols in the area for a chance of it spawning in. It can be fairly rare, but you should be aware that you need 40 of these completed for a triumph in the Europa destination section. Progress towards this triumph requires at least one other person in your fire team. Heroic patrols are new to the Destiny world and was introduced during Beyond Light in Season 12. The rewards for heroic patrols usually remain the same. Moving on to patrol exploration. This is not a mission or activity, it's simply an area on the map that you can explore with your fire team in a public space where you find other players in the Destiny world. This is known as a public space or match made area or even known as a spawn instance. This is because people who aren't in your fire team can spawn in there with you. Only 9 players can be in an instance at once, including your fire team. However, they cannot go from one area to the next with you, well unless they're extremely lucky to spawn in the same instance with you in a new area that you load into, but your fire team can. Leaving a member of your fire team in one area and having you leave the area then return will not spawn you into a new instance. Everyone must be out of the area in order to find a new instance for that public space. Players on Destiny 2 may attempt to find new instances for reasons such as finding a group of 5 or 6 random players for doing an activity like Altar of Sorrows. This is because they find it a lot easier with more guardians there. On some occasions with this becoming more complicated, doing activities such as match made strikes will allow instances to remain public, but on some specific content features like a campaign mission you may notice an empty area. This is because the game gives you a private instance specifically for the mission or activity that you're doing. Going into lost sectors and other non-public areas will be private instances and you will not run into any other player unless they are in your fire team. Currently there are 20 landing zones as of Season 12, two of which you load into the tower's social space. You can travel to these by directory, or if you're already on a planet you can fast travel to one of the landing zones within that planet. However, these are just spawning locations. There are actually 39 public spaces that you can explore and run into random players online, if my math is correct. There used to be a lot more before planets got vaulted into the Destiny content vault last season. Now there's a lot of things I could go on about when it comes to this sort of thing, how the game works, spawning instances, tricks, theories and so on, but there's one theory I want to point out and that's a rumour stating that when crouching and slowly walking to load into a new instance will increase the chance of finding new players in that instance. People believe this works because it allows the game more time to match make just as you're slowly passing a loading point. I cannot confirm if this is a strong working method so I'll let you be the judge of that one. But that's all I have for this video, if I have missed anything or you have any questions do let me know in the comments. I'll try to keep this guide updated to the relevant season and note any changes in the description and comments. So if you did find this one useful, do leave a rating and subscribe if you want to see more. I'll be working on covering all the basics for updated guides with the best techniques, methods, tricks and so on, so stay tuned for the next part. But for now, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.